Let me add my welcome to you on this first day of 2023. Happy New Year. What a great thing to be able to share this first day of the year together. What a great year I believe it's going to be ahead of us. And I hope you've had a great Christmas season. Uh, sometimes we can be with family or friends. Uh, even reaching back to Thanksgiving, that was, that was the case for Sandy and me. And some of you over the Christmas uh, celebrations were saying, we do not see enough grand, grandson's pictures. So here we go. Uh, here's a picture of uh, my wife Sandy with the little guy, little Paxton. And he's a little cutie. And I think his Granby's pretty cute too. And then I got some time with Paxton. And of course, we're hitting the books. I don't know if you'll want to be a rocket scientist, but uh, we hope you'll be a good reader like his mom and dad. And uh, we were just enjoying a little time reading our books together there. And then we, after Thanksgiving, this was near his second birthday over the Thanksgiving week, then we returned here to Springfield. And who can forget our great Christmas uh, celebration? It was a full house. And I, I still remember that moment when we all lifted our candles. What a great moment that was. As you can see, just our auditorium filled, reminding us that Jesus is the light of the world. He lights up the darkness. And I just want to thank all of those of you who are a part of our whole Christmas season and all of our amazing music community, uh, all of our volunteers who took care of children and, and served at the doors, welcoming people, and all of those of you who invited friends to be a part of our various Christmas celebrations. Thank God for you. And we're, we're believing that there's fruitfulness and changed lives that have come out of that celebration. Now, we find ourselves on the first day of 2023, and we look forward into this year. At this time last year, looking forward into 2022, as many of you know, I wasn't terribly optimistic. In fact, I had a bad feeling about 2022, if I can be honest with you. And we, we saw the Lord do many wonderful things this last year, but I don't know, even though you know the crisis of COVID has lifted even more, for which I'm grateful, I'm, I'm not sure by other metrics uh, that our country is any better than this time a year ago. In fact, I think it's worse. And now we have an all new massive outbreak of COVID in China with different variants and people aren't sure how that's gonna affect our world next and, and human catastrophe in Ukraine. And there's just, we're living in a complicated world and 2022 uh, didn't seem to help us. But as we come into 2023, I just really feel uh, a scripture on my heart in fact, it's the message of Jesus to a real church, the Church of Philadelphia. As you may know, in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, um, it starts with, with seven messages that Jesus gives to seven very real churches. they are churches on the western coast and then towards the inland of what was called at that time Asia Minor, today it's in the country of Turkey. And the sixth of the seven churches that Jesus speaks to is the Church of Philadelphia. I love that name, Philadelphia. It means brotherly love. And uh, to the church of, in, this, in the city of Philadelphia. And what he talks to them about is opportunity. And so in verse 7 of Revelation 3, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. And what he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. Now, as in all seven of these churches, Jesus, first of all, introduces himself in a certain way that has to do with the message that he will speak to them. And Jesus, of all things, introduces himself as the door opener and the door closer. And, and he says, and when I open doors, um, no one can shut them. And when I shut doors, no one can open them. Oh, what an interesting, why would Jesus introduce himself this way? Well, we're going to find out in the next verse, but, but I just, I just want to remind you of this. You, Jesus this year is going to open some amazing doors for us. And um, as you may have already experienced in your life, he certainly shuts doors as well. And I think when God shuts doors, when Jesus shuts doors in our lives, these are the more spiritually dangerous times in our lives because God doesn't always explain himself. 
You, you might remember, this is in the book of Acts, described Paul, his, secondary, his second missionary journey, he takes Silas with him. He heads up into the interior of present-day Turkey, and he tries to go west towards the coast, where Ephesus would be. And, and it says the Spirit of God stood in the way and kept them from doing it, like shut the door. So he starts to go, so he said, well, maybe that means I'm supposed to preach up in northern Turkey. So he goes north, and again, the door shuts. And as a result, Paul ends up taking the gospel into Europe in starting the church of Philippi. Ten years later, he will write that church. It's the book of Philippians in our Bible. It's a favorite of Paul's letters for many of us. And in fact, in our Wednesday night Bible study, uh, scriptures with Pastor Jim in the chapel, uh, that'll start a week from this coming Wednesday night. Uh, we're going to be going through a 10-week uh, a series on the book of Philipp on this letter of Philippians. But how, how, did, how did Paul get to Philippi? Uh, it, was, it was not God explaining himself all along the way. He just shut a door. And so Paul does the next obvious thing, and God shuts the door there. And then he ends up on the northwest coast of, of, of Troas, and God speaks to him uh, about going into into Europe and the gospel goes to Europe for the first time. And the first European church, the Church of Philippi, begins. N now, the hard part is the journey there. God shuts a door and doesn't explain himself. And what I love about the Apostle Paul is he doesn't kind of have a spiritual meltdown. He doesn't kind of say, well, I don't know that I know how to hear God's voice. I, I mean, I thought we were supposed to go, go west and God shut the door. I thought we were supposed to go north and God shut the door. I mean, what's wrong with me? He doesn't, he, he doesn't do that crazy introspective stuff. Uh, and, 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 you know, and he doesn't, he doesn't experience a crisis of faith. He doesn't decide, well, I need to deconstruct my faith because I don't get God. Instead, he just stays open to a door that will open. And if, I, I just feel to say to you today, if you've had some shut doors, you've been praying for some things, and God hasn't answered yet, and, and the door still seems shut on those things, I mean, do not be discouraged. God is writing a larger story. And he's going to say this to this church in Philadelphia. I'm writing a larger story in your life. Because uh, I am the one, yes, I open doors, and I'm also the God who closes doors. Why? Because I'm positioning you for the next era in your life. God is always positioning us. And so, and so he will say in the next verse, he'll get right to the point, to this church in Philadelphia. Now we're in verse 8 of Revelation chapter 3. I know your deeds. I know you've been faithful to me. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. He's saying this to a real church in a real place at a real moment of time. He said, into the next season in your future, you are going to walk into not shut doors, but open doors. I love the idea of an open door. I love just the thought, the picture of an open door because it invites us to take a step. It invites us to move forward in, in a purpose. And, and if I could reduce the idea of an open door to one word, it would just simply be the word opportunity. It's, it's a new opportunity. And, and I really sense these verses on my heart as we come into 2023 for our church family here at Central. And, and I trust even for your lives personally. Definitely, I'm first of all owning this for my life. That 2023 is going to be a year of opportunity. It's going to be a year of, of, of open doors. You know, um, the, the COVID mindset was a hunker down, stay on your sofa mindset and play it safe. But I believe no matter what 2023 has for us, whether it be, whether it be in terms of epidemics or politics or international crises, I just believe that God is asking us to look for the opportunities in a new way this year. I think that somehow... We're going to have open doors maybe we didn't have in 2022 or definitely we didn't have in 2020 and 2021 when we were kind of still semi-locked down. I mean, God has new opportunities for us. Just as he said to the church in Philadelphia, I have opened a door for you. I've set before you an open door. This would turn out to be an open door for ministry in their city. I've set before you an open door. I think God's saying, I'm giving you opportunities opportunities to get off your couch, opportunities to, to stay close to my heart 
and to move forward and to make a difference for me. Uh, we, we, we're going to see this in our own church family. We, it's looking like, I'm recording this before Christmas, but it's looking like we may have a debt-free future in our church with our mortgage all paid off. And that's going to create new opportunities to invest more in reaching our world and, and, and to invest in new steps we can take to reach our community. Um, it just, there's just opportunities in front of us. And I love that. See, I've placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I just sense God's not only saying that to a church in Turkey 2,000 years ago. I think he's saying it to us right now that he has set before us open doors. And, and, and he goes on, in fact, in that verse to say, I know that you have a little strength, yet you have kept my word and not denied my name. I don't think that's a put down to say you have a little strength. I mean, who of us as churches are sufficient for the incredible challenges in our world? To see, to see the possibility of hundreds of thousands and millions of people coming to Christ and Jesus building his church before he comes again. I mean, compared to that, uh, I only feel like we have a little strength. Sometimes I think of Central that way. Uh, God's got his hand on us. Uh, we're going to be on 116 years old this summer as a church. I mean, by uh, some measures, we shouldn't even be here anymore. But God has kept us alive, and God has kept us going, and God has given us rebirth cycles throughout our history. And, 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 he, and, and we may not be the largest church in town, and we may not have all the money that, it, that some churches have in our country. But he says, I know you have a little strength. I know you're there, and you're ready. And so I am, am, am going to do this. I'm going to give you an open door. And he said, I know you've kept my word, and I know that you have not denied my name. I mean, that's got our church written all over it. I mean, we've stayed faithful to the Lord. His word and fidelity to his word has been number one in, in, in our life as a church. And, and, and we've been loving one another and we've been serving him. And I just sense that God is saying, now is the time. I'm going to open new doors for you. I'm going to give you opportunities. So let's, uh, let's commit on this first day of this new year out of our, uh, of our great, great gratefulness for how faithful God has been to us. And then he has given us his strength. Uh, let, let, let's pray and move forward. Let's pray and move forward. Now, tomorrow, we'll begin, Monday, January 2nd, we'll begin our week of prayer because we're just going to start this year with prayer. We're going to call out to God. You know, the Bible often calls prayer kind of incense that goes up before him. And I know there's prayers maybe haven't been answered and there's other prayers we're so grateful that he has answered. But in the big picture, Christ's praying church is like incense that ascends into the heavens. And, and, and it's on the basis of that that God acts in our world. That's why I love this picture of, of just hands lifted to the Lord, calling out to God, like lifting that holy incense. Let's do that this week. Um, starting tomorrow morning, and every day through Friday in my daily central moments that you can access on YouTube or our, our, our Central Assembly Facebook page or our website, we, we're gonna, I'm going to be focusing on a major prayer theme for every day and some scriptures out of the Psalms that I feel like the Lord's in, encouraged me to put in front of you for us to be praying, to actually pray scripture this week around five different themes. That's going to start tomorrow. I invite you to, to join with me in that. And then every day this week here in our church building, in our church sanctuary, our main sanctuary will be open from 12 to 1 for any of you who want to come and pray. And, and there'll be quiet worship music in the background and, and, and you can just sit or kneel or pace around and just pray. Or if you want to find somebody to pray with, you can do that. And, and our sanctuaries are going to be open every noon hour for us to lift the incense of prayer to the Lord as we start this year. And then on Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday night, that'll be January 4th, we, we will have a come and go communion time where there will be pastors in the sanctuary and you can go you alone or your family and go and receive prayer from a pastor and take communion uh, ministered to you by that pastor and it's going to be a wonderful time. Just, and then you can just, you can leave or you can just sit in the sanctuary and just linger and pray. We're going to make this a prayerful year. We're going to pray 
and we're going to move forward. And you know what? As we move forward, there's so many opportunities. This is not the time to sit on our sofas anymore. This is the time to move forward and to obey God. What's he put in your heart to do? And what and, and would you be alert to the open doors he's going to... He's going to give you opportunities for conversations with some non-believer friends of yours that, that you've never had before. But I just believe God's going to give you some opportunities. Be ready for these things. I, I love the way people serve in our church family. And it, it was... First two years of COVID, it's pretty tough to find volunteers. But uh, even just yesterday, as I said, I'm recording this before Christmas. Just yesterday, we signed up two new volunteers for our children's ministry. I mean, people are starting to step forward and, and to serve together, to say, say, Jesus is coming again, but God has given us an outdoor of opportunity today. And just like that Philadelphia church, he's going to open opportunities up for us, open doors that no man can shut. And, and I just encourage you to obey what God's prompting you to do. What's he put in your heart to do to serve him? Um, where, where is he speaking to you about your financial budget and making God a priority there? Where, where is he speaking to you about your time budget and, 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 and really being engaged in other people's lives? Where is he speaking to you about joining a small group and, and, and to, to kind of supercharge and enhance your own spiritual growth this year? We, we've got great opportunities for you to grow deeper spiritually this year. And some of you, he's asking even to step into leadership. You need to be investing in a small group. You need to be leading a small group and investing as God's invested in you. Maybe this is the open door. You'll see, and you're going to be seeing open doors made available to you this year at Central to step into leadership and begin reproducing yourself spiritually in the lives of other people. This is our year of the open door. God says, I've opened a door for you that no man can shut. And, and who knows where we could be by the end of this year as God just takes our simple obedience and looks at it and says, well, you got a little strength. And you stayed faithful to my word, so watch the doors I can open up for you. We don't have to be impressive. That's God's part. But we just have to be obedient. And, and I'm taken by how he closes, as we close, how he closes this message to the church in Philadelphia. And it's verse 11 of Re Revelation 3. I am coming soon. So hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. We want to be ready when Jesus comes back. We want to not say, well, we drifted and we lost most of the anointing and the sense of your presence among us and we just kind of, kind of went our own ways. No, he said, I'm coming again soon. So hold on to what you have and go for it because I'm opening for you a door that no man can shut. It'd be a great honor just to pray for you on this first day of the new year. If you don't know Christ, in this prayer, I want you to agree with me to open your life to Christ. And if you are a follower of Christ, if you're one of those people like in the church in Philadelphia, you have a little strength and you've not denied his word, I want you to be open to the great possibilities of Jesus through you this year. So Father, we thank you. Here we are. Thank you for the opportunity of a new year. Thank you for what we just celebrated, that you came to our world and it made all the difference. And now we start this year, we want to start it with you. Lord, if we're not serving you, please forgive our sin. Forgive our wayward and rebellious wills and take our hearts and fill them with your spirit, we pray. We ask you to come into our lives. Let us start this new year as a child of God serving you. And Lord, for those of us who, who, who we do serve you, we, we fall in that category of having at least a little bit of strength and, and, and having kept your word. We pray now that we'll be ready for the open door you promised to give us. Lord, use us this year. Fill our hearts. Answer prayer we've never seen answered before. Heal. Heal people's bodies in a way you've never healed them before. Fill people with your spirit in the way you've never done it before. Help us to share you with our friends like we've never had opportunities before. And may your kingdom advance before the day you come. Lord, let us hold on tightly to your calling and to your purpose for our lives till that day that you come again. And we praise you. We commit this year to you. And we thank you that you're going to be mighty in our lives and in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen.